Hey guys, what's up? Mr. Parker here for episode 10 of The Secret Top 10, and the special guest this week is Harry Collins. He is a filmmaker, a YouTuber, he's a huge supporter of underground horror. The guy, if you're looking for a gore film or a, a violent crazy movie, you go to Harry Collins, he knows where to get it, he knows what it is. The guy knows a ton about uh, underground movies and everything like that. Um, he runs a, a Facebook group, uh, Hard Gore Core, and that's the same name as his YouTube channel. He's been doing it a while, he's a real cool guy, I've met him a few times at Wasteland, always bullshit with him. Yeah, anyways, I think he had a great list. We did have some sound issues, you know, on Zoom. I'm learning. It's a learning here with Zoom and stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I tried to clean it up a bit, but there is a echo, a reverb. I, I tried to f fix it up. It didn't work too well, so I, I understand. It's a long episode, almost two hours, and maybe you get a little lack, a little lazy at the end, editing, cutting in clips, but yeah, the tournament's cool, and his list is a little bit different than anybody else's. Uh, yeah, I don't think any of the movies mentioned, maybe one of them came up. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, yeah, unique list, a good video. Check it out. I hope you're enjoying the secret top 10. Uh, I know I am doing, uh, doing these. Um, I, I enjoy doing them uh, quite a a bit um editing them they're really fun but they're very time consuming so like i said we're approaching the season finale at episode 13 and then we'll take a 13 week hiatus while i can build up another 13 episodes with some new guests some reoccurring guests and uh yeah hopefully we'll keep this going uh feedback is always welcome uh yeah let's hop into the episode 10 of the secret top 10 with harry collins i'm here with uh harry collins uh he's a director actor youtuber like myself he uh covers a lot of gory crazy movies he directed last days of livermore with this is short and yep. sidling hill and i know yep. you're working on some other stuff too right i am um i'm actually i did keepsake that was my latest short to be released and the film i'm working on now is uh collins creepy and company so okay. that's what i'm working on at the moment all right cool uh so i picked you for this because i know you're a good guy met you in person and stuff and you have a real crazy taste in movies, and I think that you'll bring a, a weird kind of different thing that a lot of people won't, you, you know what I mean? Like, not the same typical stuff. So when I do, when I have a question, I ask, like, I think of a few people, like, what a movie I'll be like, I would ask you. Like, I've asked you questions like, what the fuck is this, you know? And you've helped me out with answering some questions on certain shit. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I love I love researching films, and that, that's the whole reason I started um, the Hardcore Core Group, because I had all this knowledge on all these crazy gore films and i wanted to share it with people and people around where i live are not really into that so i was like well i'm going to start this group and i'll just start inviting people that share the same taste as i do and um you know and i think that's it's great that i found so many people like me and yourself that you know enjoy this type of cinema so i love i love it like you know helping people find gems and i i enjoy finding them myself but you know whenever somebody asks me a question about finding something it's like a challenge so pretty awesome oh yeah yeah i spent a lot of time on letterbox just like going in horror movies clicking a year and then yeah. scrolling down into the bottom until you're just looking at movies that 90 percent of them are weird indian movies that probably aren't even fucking released oh yeah yeah exactly those are the best ones you know those are gems you know <laughs> i haven't seen too many but i've seen a handful but uh sometimes most of those fuckers you can't even find anyway. no you know what? I, I found a lot of them are YouTube. Uh, I was surprised to find, like on that that one on site I sent you, uh, that vomit bag. Yeah. A lot of those, a lot of those films you can find on YouTube, surprisingly, and they're uncut too, which is surprising. I, I mean, I never thought in a million years I'd find those. I mean, the quality is, is really is shit sometimes, and there, there might not be subtitles, but I mean, those films are really hard to get. You know, you can not, never find them. There, there's no really official release in this country, so it's kind of a neat that you can find that stuff on youtube and some of them even have subtitles i mean they're not the best but i, I found a couple yeah. weird movies on there that were like uh when i went down 94 i found some and like just weird shit and sometimes you got to be clever and search like the japanese name in japanese or in whatever language yeah 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 if whenever i found a film that had subtitles that's definitely a plus because not a lot of them have it, but I mean, it's, it is pretty awesome whenever you find something like that, some gems and stuff. So, you know, it's very, you, you appreciate that more or if it's an English dub, even though yeah. sometimes the dubs are so horrible that it, it, their lips are just don't even match anything that the sub or the English, the English language says, but that got, that gives it the charm, you know? Yeah. You, you know yeah. what I fucking saw on YouTube the other day? When I was editing exactly. something, I was like, well, I want to pull a clip from men behind the sun. So I searched, I was like, there'll be a trailer, right? 
the whole fucking yeah. movie's on there. And and it's the English dub, which I didn't even know fucking existed. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I don't even think I ever saw an English dub of that. Yeah, it's on YouTube, the whole fucking thing. And, like, it's crazy. That's, like, probably top five most, ma- like, semi-main known violent movies ever made. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a classic. I'm I'm surprised it's on YouTube. I mean, isn't Massacre supposed to be releasing that on Blu-ray? Yeah, the first three. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah, that's kind of surprising. You'd think that you know somebody would pull it down for copyright, but not even copyright. Fucking yeah. like real dead body autopsy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that movie's wild, man. One movie's real wild. Don't let your nipples slip, though. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say the F word too many times. You're done. Dead kid, yeah. for real, put it on there. Yeah, exactly. All yeah. right, so um, I'll tie myself if that's cool. That's cool. If you have any caveats or any special things, like if it's, let's say, for example, like, um, you know, 1980s movies, but nothing with a slasher or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, um, I'm um i going to make it pretty simple for you. I know okay. that I watched a couple of the other ones, and I know that some of them were pretty uh, – pretty tough but i'm gonna make it pretty easy All right. i mean it, it, it's different but it, uh, it it'll be uh it'll be pretty easy i think okay so let me know when you're when you hit your uh topic and i'll hit start after you get it out okay i like like a lot of people know me as the, for gore films and, and this category is going to be for gore but a lot of people don't realize that i'm a fan of spaghetti westerns so this topic is my top 10 goriest western films Westerns in general? Just Westerns in general. It could be anything. It could be Italian. It could be Mexican. It could be American. My top 10 glorious Western films. All right. I'm going to hit start. Okay. I'll have probably like five or six that come right to my head. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I figured you'd get a few of these. Um, You know, there's there's some on there that I don't know if you will get, which I kind of wanted to talk about. So, you know, to let people know that there's there's other uh, glory westerns out there because a long time I couldn't figure out. There was a lot of them I couldn't even find. You know, I was like, where, where, where are these glory westerns at? I know they're out there. Uh, I'm not sure if I've seen that one, but I'm going to put it. Um, now, horror westerns count too? Yeah. Yeah, westerns in general. Just as long as they have cowboys and horses and, you know, it doesn't no. matter what the time period as long as it's a western. Now, I'm or writing if one. That, as a Western. <laughs> which one? I said, if it, it, as long as it counts as a Western, you know, sometimes people are like, that's not a Western, but I mean, if it has the, you know, the, the format of a Western film. Yeah, I'm not putting in any distinct order here. Um, okay. What the fuck? Uh, I can't spell worth the shit right now. <laughs> I can't either, so. I mean, I, I can't. Probably- but I can at probably, the same time. <laughs> and I'll probably fumble a lot of these directors' names and the titles because some of them are in different languages, so bear with me on that. Oh, fuck. All right, I'm trying to think. What gory one, gory one? Um, the fuck is the... Um, uh, What the fuck is that faulty one with uh, Franco Nero and uh, Tomas Milan? It's the <laughs> fucking good one. That's the one I'm putting. Faulty Mulan. I can't think of it. Franco. <laughs> I'm done. Faulty Franco is the last one. It's called. Uh, what the fuck is it called? <laughs> Fucked up. But oh man, I forgot fucking one that I should have put on there. I completely <laughs> fucked it up. I should have put the fucking. I, I don't want to spoil it. Fuck it. I, I should have put the Sergio Martino one or. Man Called Blade. I didn't put that yeah. one down. I, I know yeah, that's gory. a good one. That's I haven't seen one. it. I know it's gory, though. Yes. Yes. It All is. right. So let's hear think, your list. Oh, go ahead. I, I, th- I think that you probably did pretty good on this. Uh, like I said, I didn't want to make it too crazy for you because I, I just don't think that's fair. I mean, to, to, to kind of, you know, mess with you too much because I wanted you to get a few of them because I, I, wanted, I know you've seen some of these and it's, I just wanted to be able to discuss them. So uh, my number 10 glory western is scalps
Our way! Which was directed by Bruno Mattei. You ever see that? No, he did two uh, spaghetti westerns, two, spoo- two westerns, yes. one scalps and one's white Apache, right? Yes, yes, he did. But this one is the, the, the 1987 film with the female actress that goes around, you know, scalping her victims. Like, she, and, and, and it's like that, that other version is not as gory as this version of scalps. So there is two versions of that. You, oh, you they're the right. same. They're the same movie. No, they're not. There's they're scenes. There's there's different scenes and in, in different films. It, it, like you know how he did films, like where he did different versions and stuff. So Scalps is almost kind of like the uncut version, but it does have a different story. But I think he used same the same material as as that other film. So kind of like um, good. Huh? Other Hell, and then the Nun movie they made it Nun in the basement, and then they did that. Just Franco did it with um. The Sadist of Notre Dame and yeah. fucking like six of those movies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I wanted to see that, but I know I'm pretty sure Severin's putting that out on Blu-ray. That's almost a yeah. guarantee. They keep saying they have more Bruno Mattei. They're definitely putting those two out. Oh, okay. okay. I, that's my guess, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think that those uh I think those films are very, very awesome. I'm glad that, that they were re releasing them on Severin because I Bruno I, Mattei, I, don't, I don't know. That's just them. that's just a guess. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that's coming. They've released everything else he's done. And same yeah. with uh, Franco stuff, you know? Yeah. So, so, yeah, that's great. Is it a revenge film? Is she like, is it like a rape revenge one? Yeah, yeah. There's there's overtones of rape and revenge in it. A lot of these Westerns have that, you know, kind of, that kind of theme. The um, reoccurring theme. A lot of my list, is, that is a reoccurring theme in a rape well, revenge. I mean, almost every Western movie you ever see is a revenge movie, right? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much, you know? <laughs> yeah, um... <laughs> There's was, always somebody doing wrong to somebody, the good guy, and the good guy comes back with a vengeance. You know that that's pretty much the theme of all these. So, but um, they're good. Fucking, uh, what was the one I was thinking of? And don't get confused with Fred Olin Ray Scalps. Not the same movie. No, no, no. It's not the same movie. I didn't watch Scalps from Fred Olin Ray. I heard it's terrible, but I have it. Uh, isn't that the isn't that the slasher movie? Native American did. slasher one. Yeah, I I actually enjoyed that. <laughs> I mean, he's I, made a couple of good movies for sure. Yeah, I I actually I thought I I really enjoyed that. I thought I thought that was pretty pretty good. But I, then again, that was years ago. Whenever I watched it, I think that made like one of the top goriest slashers of the eighties. Really? Yeah, like like one of them in that uh, list. I think it was put in one of the, like horror horror hound magazine or whatever. And I then, think like, I remember reading that in there. The issue before they like trashed the movie and then put it in their gory list. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they didn't they didn't have very good good um good good things to say other than it was pretty gory, you know. So, but I mean, it is what it is. I I, I like those type of films, and it doesn't matter if the budget's not very good. And I mean, I like a lot of Fred Olin Ray's films. I mean, Deep Space though, is a good one. What's that? Deep Space is is a good flick yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I like that one zombie one he did too. Um, Alien Dead. <laughs> yeah, that's like a total piece of shit, but it has charm to it. I I, I don't know. I enjoy it. I like know. it's like that one guy who did Dark Power and uh, the Alien Force or some shit. Like where it has oh, yeah. Lash Larue. Those are like yeah. kind of shitty, but I kind of yeah. like them at the same time. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I I like films like that i mean if they have a certain charm i mean there is piece, there is films out there that are just totally garbage i mean i don't like saying that but they're just really bad but if you it, you could tell that some of those he has heart with his films i mean he tries to try to make a good film so i appreciate that i, I feel do. regional too regional always yeah. helps because you know it's yeah. just like a group of people making it and they're not being like we're gonna get rich off this it's not yeah. like a red yeah. box shit shit title exactly exactly so yeah yeah <laughs> All right, I'll give you my next one. It is called the number nine. is called An Eye for Eye. It's a Mexican film. It's made in 
I can't even pronounce the Mexican name, and I'm not even going to try because it. I'm going to just fuck it up. So, <laughs> but it was it it uh it was its name. It had a couple of names. Eye for an eye is the name on IMDb, and I think it's called. There was another AKA it was called a Taste of Savage, and this film, um, I enjoyed it. It's not the I mean, it has a lot of good gore in it for its time, especially 1971. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a scene where, um, well, the story is about this kid that his father gets murdered, grows up, and his mother wants him to go and avenge his father. And she hires um, Cameron Mitchell's in it, which was kind of surprising to see him in it. And I, I, I'm a big fan of him. Oh, I love and, Mitchell. Yeah, he's kind of a gunslinger, and he, he teaches this boy – to be a gunslinger and the boy grows up and he's really good at, um, you know, swinging the pistol. So he trains this boy, but this boy grows up and he kind of goes off the deep end and starts killing people. Like anybody that crosses him, he's, he's killing them. And um, there's a really cool scene in there where he shoots a guy in the eye. And it kind of remin- reminisces the uh, Fulci scene with the uh, uh, wood going in the eyes, yeah, yeah. big gaping hole in a guy's eye. And I'm like, man, that's, that's crazy gory for 1971. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, it's not the best film in the world, but you know, there's a lot of bloody squib shots and um, it's pretty entertaining. If you can find a copy, I mean, it's um, I, I found a, a bootleg of it, I think on eBay a few years ago. So and it's been a while since I watched it, but I, I really remember enjoying it. And I remember I just like, Hey, this is, I'm going to add this to my list of, you know, gory films. So, so if you, if you get a chance check it out that is a mexican it's not spanish no it's it says it's from uh it was made in mexico let me let me look no, i believe you that that's crazy and uh cameron mitchell uh, the plot sounds kind of like what the uh um lee van cleef movie day of anger wasn't that similar plot where he trains yeah. the kid and then, but i think it was the opposite i think van lee van cleef was the bad guy in that right yeah 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 it was it says mexico it said it was released in uh, june of 1975 so i guess it was they sat on it for a few years, so. And um, the director yeah. is not Rene Cardona. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Alberto Marcio. <laughs> oh, Alberto yeah, Marcio. Everybody Marcio. knows him. Yeah, I don't. I I don't know what else he's done. I didn't really research him too much, but I, I enjoyed the film. And like I said, when I saw Cameron Mitchell's name on it, I was like, oh, I definitely gotta. I got I to gotta definitely check this out. If it's gory and adds him in it, because he, he does a great job as a gunslinger. Oh, so he's always good. Yeah, he, he he's he's his character is pretty interesting in it. So And there's some really funny, hilarious shit in it, too, because some of the acting is kind of, you know, kind of kind of bad, but good in a way. It's dubbed? It's in English, then? It is in English, yeah. Oh, have you ever seen yeah. any of those Santo movies dubbed in English? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I might have. I I typically try to find ones with the original language with the subs, but I don't know if I ever watched those dub. Why is it bad? The box set. I they were all dub versions, and fucking there's one. There's a western one where there's lepers that they fucking the lepers they think are actually watch that one. It's like Riders of Terror from 1970. That one's okay. the most fun. It's like a western semi horror movie thing. <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to get on that one with Santa. But is it? Santos in it too, so like there are all these like there's like a western feel, and then Santos just walking around in this fucking wrestling mask and shit for some reason. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I, okay. I, I've watched a few of those before. I know yeah. I have. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna have to. Yeah. What, what, who put out the box set? VCI. It's not the best quality, but I mean, there's eight films in it, so. Oh, that's a steal. Would you get it for like twenty bucks or something like that? I don't that, know. Or? It's a Blu-ray set, but I would I would try to see Riders of Terror if you don't want to get the set. Just probably find it to rent or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I can dig it up somewhere. You know. All right, number eight. And this is in um, this is in Spanish or yeah Spanish. So I'm gonna try to sit, pronounce the name. It's called El Aracatas. Aracatas. I think that's how you say it. It was made in 1978. And it was directed by Alberto Marcilla. That's the same guy, isn't it? Yo también soy doctor. Y te voy a hacer una operación. Ábrale el hocico. Oh, 
<laughs> Let's see. It might be. It might be. Let me let me check his um. Let me check his thing. Let's see. He's known for. I think I, it might have been different. Uh, he's got a lot of films. Yep. Same director. That's funny. There's only one guy <laughs> in Mexico making uh, Mexican yeah. glory uh, westerns. Yeah, that's funny. I'm going to have to look at more of his stuff then. I didn't realize that he he directed this one. And this is another Mexican revenge film. Um, and it, and it's, it's about it's sort, of, sort of the same story. It's about a uh, doctor and his family. And this one was not in English so or didn't have subtitles. So this is this is what I gathered from watching it. I actually watched this pretty recent. Um, it's about uh, a doctor and his family. They try to save this guy's daughter, and she ends up dying. And um, they go on the run because this guy's that the, the father of the daughter that died um, comes. You know, he's kind of a gunslinger, and he comes back and murders the doctor and and lets the mother live. Um, so the son comes back. He's grown up, and he comes back home and finds that his father has been murdered. So he goes and gets vengeance um, on this on this guy. So um, this one was really good too. Same kind of thing. It had some a lot of gory kills, a lot of um, gory squibs. I, I could, like I said, I didn't know what was going on. There was some rape in it, which was kind of it was kind of odd because it was he had this girlfriend and he <laughs> he ends up raping her. I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. Sounds like some Clint Eastwood shit. Yeah, I was like, I don't know what's going on here, why he's doing this, but it was kind of strange. But the ending of it is really, I really enjoyed the ending. It was just, he ends up finding the guy and murdering the guy that killed his father. But I don't want to spoil the ending. It was just, it was great. It was just a bloodbath. I mean, it was, it was the highlight of the film. So if you get a chance to watch this, I mean, it hasn't been released as far as I know with English subtitles. Um, but it is worth a watch. Like sometimes I can't watch films that don't have subtitles. If there's a lot of dialogue, Yeah, yeah, yeah. but this film was, this film was pretty entertaining. I mean, it, even though I, I didn't know what was really going on, it was still an entertaining film and lots of gore, lots of gore in it. So for, for 1978, I thought uh, you said this list was going to be easy. <laughs> there's no way I would have got two out of three of those. <laughs> well, I think fig- I figured you would get at least five. At least five, because it, it does. There is there is other films on here that are more. I don't. I wouldn't say mainstream, but but known. So, uh, I figured I figured you'd get a couple. I, I keep thinking of fucking movies that I should have put on the list and I didn't. And if one of them's on there, I'm gonna be pissed because two of them are I really like and I didn't put them on the list. And it was just it's because you don't have time. You know what I mean? You don't think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get you on that one. All right, I'm gonna pull up this one. <laughs> This one, I I'm I think that this film is a Mexican film too. Don't quote me on it. I gotta check out what IMDb, IMDb says. Um, just give me one second here. Ah, here it is. It is called Guns and Gut. What are you buttoning in for? She's my property. Uh, all those? Mm-hmm. They're my property, too. Bought them or something? Yeah. I paid for them until the morning. Think you're man enough to handle them all? Yep. You ever see it? The guns and God? Guns and Guts. Guns and Guts. Yeah, Guns and Guts, and it came out in 1974. I don't think I've ever seen a Mexican Western, except I've seen a lot of Spanish and a lot of Italians, and I think the only one that I've seen that qualifies is Sato and the Riders of Terror. Okay. Well, I've okay. probably seen more modern Mexican, but I can't think of any classic Mexican Westerns off the top of my head. 
Yeah, this one, this one that says it was made in Mexico too, and it's um, it stars uh, Jorge River- Rivero, and I, he's been in quite a few films. I think he's done. A, I think he did a couple of Italian films, if I was to be correct. He was kind of a big bodybuilder type guy, and he he's in this film too. And this and again, another revenge kind of story, um, where these um, these these two guys are. Uh, hunting down this guy that uh, did them wrong. Uh, the one guy, I think he mur- the one guy, he think he murdered his wife. And the other guy, they don't really say what the other guy, why the other guy wants to kill him. But they end up hooking up with this kind of playboy guy, but played by that Riviero guy. Yeah. And he's kind of like a card player. And he's his character is really cool. There's a cool scene where they get in this big bar fight and they beat each other up. And he has this playboy. He has all these like women playing cards with him, and he's always playing strip poker. And there's there's a lot of nudity in it and stuff and it's just a it's kind of a sleazy western if you if you ask me i mean it, it's um I, it's really entertaining i mean for 1974 a lot of these films I, I was very surprised on how much violence and nudity were in these films i guess because they're in other countries but yeah this this film is really entertaining and the the ending is similar to the wild bunch and it's just all out. They go to this this place where they're looking for this guy that did them wrong, and he has this huge fortress. And they just they they just go in there, guns blazing. And it's just amazing ending. It's just like total bloodbath, bloody squibs, and you know people getting shot. What's it's, that one called again? Guns and guts. It was made in 1974, and you can actually for a while there. I found a DVD on um uh on Amazon. They were selling them on Amazon, and there it's an English dub too, and um. I don't know oh, if you can find them. Yeah, it, it's 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 really um, a really well made film. The ending is laughable though. <laughs> it just kind of comes out of nowhere. I'm I mean, like, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Is it a joke? Like a silly thing? Like everybody's dead, and then somebody cracks a joke? Like oh, oh, oh and then no, they walk. No, no. It's just it's just, just kind of strange. You just don't you just don't really see this this ending coming. So I mean, people might enjoy that. But I, I just, I just, I think it is a really entertaining film. Yeah, it's like a rip off of the Wild Bunch, but um, it, it's, uh, it's just a really fun film. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the characters. There's a lot of action, and they get in these uh, scraps with other people uh, on their way to finding this person. There's some some bloody shootouts. So, yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty entertaining film. I, I um. I really like it. I'm glad to have it in my collection. Like I said, I try to find all these films and add them in my collection. Oh yeah. Um, some, some of them I have to watch online or, or, you know, because they're really hard to find. So this one, I know that you could find it on Amazon there for a while. I don't know if it's still on there, but yeah, check it out. I think you'd like it. Well, that that's the thing is like, everybody's like, Oh, I've seen every movie. And it's like, anybody thinks that like, I'm telling you, you haven't seen shit because like no. you look at, there's so much you can't yeah. watch it all. No, you're absolutely right. There's no such thing as watching it all. I mean, I, I have I have thousands, I'm, I, and I'm not even lying. People just don't understand. I have thousands and thousands of movies on my watch pile. And it's Me no too. joke. You know what I mean? And it's just, there's never enough time. I try to sort through them. I mean, there's ones that I just want to watch, and I forget about them, and then I pull them up. Oh, you know what? I forgot to tell you about that Guns and Guts. It's on Tubi. Uh, oh, really? Uh, a, high, a high definition version is on Tubi, and it's uncut, too. And in English dub, I forgot it's totally on Tubi. So if you can't find a DVD of it, go on Tubi. It's actually in high definition. The DVD isn't. So I oh yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna find that movie because I I wonder if it's got an AK name too. I mean, I'm, I um yeah, there's like um there's a Spanish name. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it. But if you get on IMDb, it's under Guns and Guts, 1974. Right. So and you can find it on Tubi too. So I'm definitely finding that one. Heck yeah, yeah, it's a it's a good it's good stuff. All right, let's see. This is number six, and I know that this is this is a, I know this is a Spanish film too, or a Mexican film too. It's kind of funny that these these are like my theme here so far, and you know a lot of people would think that I would be listing a bunch of Italian films, which, you know, there is some Italian films on my list, but um, this one is also a Mexican film. And let me see. I'll pull it up right here. It is called The Naked Man. Quítese toda la ropa. ¿Qué? 
que se quite la ropa. Desnúdese. ¡Rápido! ¡Dije que se desnudara! And it was made in 1976. I actually heard that it was made in 1973, but IMDb lists, lists it as 1976. So I don't know the backstory about it. But this is also a revenge film. And I posted a clip online a few weeks ago. I don't know if you caught, caught it uh -huh. from it. This film is about a guy that's mother was raped he witnessed his mother being raped when he was a child and the guy was on top of his mother and he saw a brand on this guy's ass so this guy grows up and he hunts down these these people these rapists basically he hunts down these rapists and makes them strip down naked and looks at you know checks for this scar or this brand on their ass which is kind of hilarious because it's um <laughs> It's such a strange film. It, it, there's like a lot of scenes, like they have like a rape scene in slow motion. Like I was like, I never seen a rape scene in slow motion before, and a lot of their kills are in slow motion. And it's just such a weird film. And it's 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 really sleazy. There's lots of nudity in it. There's lots of rape in it. And the, these these rapists are like the horriblest people in the world. But this guy that gets revenge on them, this the kid that grew up, he. The, the, the way he executes them is just amazing. They're, they're just the bloodiest, goriest kills. And I don't really want to spoil the ending, but the, the, the ending is what the clip I posted online a, a few weeks ago. It's just, it's just one of the craziest endings I've ever seen in a, in a Western film. Like, it's just, it's just wild. I don't want to spoil it. I really want to tell you what it is. But... I'll, I'll, I'll see that one, too. Like, both, all these sound really good. Like, and I, like I said, I don't, I guess Mexican Westerns is my blind spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it's funny because I, this film, I didn't have subs on it. Um, I watched it in Spanish, but the other day I found somebody that subbed it, um, uh, did fan subs for it. So I'm going to actually watch this tonight with subs finally. So I know it's, I mean, the story is pretty to follow, pretty easy to follow, but it's gonna be really nice to watch this with subtitles. I, I, I love that fans are doing this now. Oh yeah, they're, yeah. Going, they're going and subbing these films. It's just amazing, and they're going and they're sometimes they're recutting these films and you know making them making them better. It's just amazing that people are doing that now because, like I said, a lot of these films are um, almost kind of like lost films because I I never heard of this film. I never heard of this film I until I started doing. So I'd start doing some research. I actually found this on that. A lot of these I found on that vomit, vomit, vomit bag website. So it's good to good, good to do research because I found a ton of gems on there. So it, it took me like four or five hours just to go through the Asian movies alone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. all I did because I was like, I yeah. don't want to open any more cans of worms right now. <laughs> yeah, I've been I, I've I've been through the list twice. And I, I go through it anytime I can because I, you, you just miss stuff. Oh, yeah. And there, there's so much wild stuff on that site. So, um, you know, a lot of these I found through that site. So I'm, I'm very happy that um, the guy that that made this, that list is is there because I would have never found this film. So he you know, actually had 
one that I've been looking for forever, just for a while, actually. You know the movie The Beast from 1980? Yes. It was remade twice, once in 99 with Anthony Wong, which was easier to find. And then there was okay. one made in 2003, which is a remake. And I was like, I could not find the fucking thing. There was a DVD, but it was nowhere. Is, so is, I, is, is that is that the is that a revenge is that a rape revenge film yeah where like they're on the island and all yeah. the, the bad guys are so sleazy in that there's like yeah. the big bald guy it, yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i had a like third generation uh vhs rip of that it was it was horrible quality so I have a hopefully. I have a, D, a burned DVD like a rip like a VHS but like I said I never saw part the the two remakes which I feel is really weird to remake that movie twice. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it that is kind of strange. I didn't even know that there was a remake of that. So, huh. it's called like Deadly much. Camp or something. Deadly Camp. I'm gonna have to look that up. I'm yeah. definitely gonna have to look that up. Yeah, that's a, that, I, I enjoy that film. I mean, I haven't watched it for many years, but it's a good I, movie. I, I, yeah, you'll have to you'll have to message me those later after, so I can remember which ones they are in the in the years they came out. Well, I haven't seen the other two yet, and I mean, I was like, wonder if it's like if I rewatch one, I, I try to rewatch all three, but I'm sure by the third one, it's just garbage. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, remakes, man. Me and re- remakes are kind of like uh, we have a love hate relationship. So. Yeah, sometimes they're alright. I don't really get mad anymore. If just if it looks too bad, I'll just ignore it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to, but it's it's difficult these days. But I need to I need to I need to be more like you on that kind of thing. So like if I if it looks cool, I'll watch it. If it looks like shit, I'm not like the RoboCop remake. I just ignored that and Total Recall. I was like, no interest. Yeah, those were pretty bad. <laughs> I, I, no interest. I mean, no Paul yeah, Verhoeven. Nope. Yeah, you can't you can't mess with the classic. You can't mess with the classic. All right, number five. It's, this is an American film. I thought it was a Mexican film, but I was wrong. It's called Machoism. Ma, no, Macho, ma, Machoismo. 40 Grays for 40 Guns. I think I'm saying that right. Harry Novak presents the first motion picture bold enough to be called Machismo. Seven valiant Mexicans fighting for the one thing more important than life, machismo, guts, afraid of nothing but the shame of fear, riding north to meet a challenge and avenge a wrong. Not since the Wild Buck has there been a movie with the power and adventure of machismo. It was made in 1971, and this is an American film, but it's funny because it's... The, the the accents of these actors are so thick that I thought it was a Mexican film. It's in English, but their their accents are so thick. And it was directed by Paul Hunt. And he, he did quite a few other films. Let me pull up his Did he program. do Death Hunt? Uh, he did the movie Clones in 1973. Did you ever see that? Um, Mondo Macabre put that out? Yes. Oh, what, what, oh, no, that was the 79 version. That was the 79 version. No, I he think did I did see that one. That was Clonus uh, or something. Yeah, Clonus was the 79 version. Yeah, I seen that, that one. That, 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 uh, he did, let me see. Uh, uh, or did I see Lifespan? I can't fucking remember, man. He was a producer on Twisted Nightmare, Demon Wind producer. I've seen Demon Wind. I've seen Twisted Nightmare twice. The second time yeah. I watched it, I put it in, and I got 25 minutes in, and I was like, I already seen this like two years ago, and I forgot everything about it. Yes, he did. He he actually directed Twisted Nightmare, it says here on IMDb, which is kind of funny. Who's the yeah. guy who directed uh, Death Hunt then? Was it Peter Steven? Steven? I can't remember who directed Death Hunt. He's a bigger director, though. Yeah, I can't remember who directed that one. Um, is it the Death Hunt? Charles uh, Bronson. Charles Bronson. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I can't remember. But this, but this film, Forty Graves for Forty Guns. Um, it, this one was about a, bit, a, a group of bandits that. Um, it's not really a revenge film. This is like the first one. It's not really a revenge film. They rob a bank and they're trying to get to the Mexican border. They're like in Texas or something like that, and they get into a gunfight with a group of. Um, uh like federales uh the lawmen and one of the lawmen gives them a a deal that if they go into this town and clean up this town that has like all these bad guys that are kind of like uh 
a high plains drifter, like a, a, a bunch of guys that are, are mean to the town and they're like torturing the people and just taking advantage of everybody. Like, and what is it? Magnificent seven guys, bandits, those guys. Yeah. This bandits that are the total anarchy. So they, they, this lawman makes them a deal. It says if they go and like, you know, clean up the town and, and uh, I don't know, I think they might have to get, is it, I don't know if they have to get money. It's been a while since I saw this. Um, they, they, if they, if they, if they clean up the town, they, they get free that the lawmen will let them go into Mexico and they can, with their money that they stole from this bank. So it's a pretty cool story. Um, it was kind of slow at first, but once they get into that town, um, you kind of get into some of the characters. Um, there was a lot of things that they touched on. They touched on a lot of racism, which was kind of surprising in this, um, 1971, a lot of the towns are kind of when these Mexicans guys come into the town, these, uh, these, yeah. these town guys are like, you know, talking shit on these Mexicans and they Mexicans start kicking the ass, kicking the, these oh, yeah. local asses, you know, and they're like all afraid of them. And they're like, we're here to help you guys try to clean up your town. So this group of bandits is supposed to be coming into town, kind of like high playing drifter. Yeah. And they set up like all these, like, they sabotage these, these, these outlaws when they come into town and it's it's almost like another it, it is called the aka is called revenge of the wild bunch so i guess this is supposed to be the sequel to the wild bunch fuck i, and, I think i know this movie actually i think really? i do i think really? you posted about it before yeah. and i didn't yeah, watch I it did. but i searched it out and i found a copy to watch later oh good good yeah 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 they they it, they this it, it, i guess it's supposed to be unofficial sequel to the wild bunch but the ending is just brutal like for like for 1971 there is everybody that gets shot there's just an explosion of blood people getting blown up there's a guy on a roof throwing dynamite people are getting blown to bits i'm like holy shit this is this is crazy for a western film the ending is just absolutely amazing for for the time just a bloodbath um and i think one of the ladies that are in this film was i i look she looked really familiar i can't remember what her name is let me look and see if I can find her on here. Leanne Chavin. She actually played the nun in Silent Night, Deadly Night. The mean one? I haven't <laughs> seen Silent Night, Deadly Night. Yeah. The one that's sister, the one that beats him yeah. all the time? Yes, yes, yes. She's actually young in this, and she plays, I think she's like a madam at a whorehouse. And um, she she's in it, and she actually, her performance is very, very well done. I'm like watching it. I'm like, yeah, I know I've seen this lady before. So there is like there is American actors in there. You will recognize they're a lot younger, but, um, but it's it, the ending is just phenomenal. It's just um, you know, it's a complete blood bloodbath. And then the very end, I'm not going to spoil it too. It's it's like, it. I don't even know how to <laughs> explain it, because like these 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 bandits like gave up their lives to save this town, and the way the town people act out at the end is just laughable. I what mean, was it, that it, one it, called? Um, macho, macho is macho. Forty Grays for Forty Guns, 1971, aka Return of the Wild Bunch. Oh, machismo. Machismo, yes. Good. You see, you you pronounce these things better than me. I can. Well, I mean, it's a word that you'd never see spelled out. So when you see it, you're like, what? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the one that I looked for before. Okay. And you found and you found a copy. Yeah, I'm, the quality's dog shit though. I mean, it's oh, never yeah. really had a nice release. No, no, you. The, yeah, that, that's the only thing that I complain about is the quality is shit. So they need to they need to definitely put this out on Blu-ray. It's it's a it's a fantastic film. Fantastic. Paul Hunt. Yeah. 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 So that one is that one is up there in my it's it, it's. Hi, I, I really, really enjoyed it. It's number five, so Royal Dano's in it. <laughs> uh I, what was he in? Uh Killer Clowns from Outer Space, Ghoulies Two. Oh Drum. Okay. He's one of okay. my favorite character actors. Oh really? Well then yeah. that makes it that makes it even better then for you. Got Gary Kent. Gary Kent is in a bunch of shit. He's uh, still alive. He was like a stunt guy. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's what I thought. I mean, I knew a lot of the actors. Like, when you see them, you're like, hey, I know that guy. You know, I, I know him from this. I know him from that. So, yeah, it's a it's a wild film. I wish I wish that somebody would pick it up. Like, Vinegar Syndrome or Severin Man, there's so many of these great 
films out there. And I just, I mean, I'm not saying that their releases are bad, but there's so many other things out there they could release that are just so amazing. You know, they sound like, like Kino. Like, Your whole list sounds like Kino titles. That's why I love Kino because they'll just like go back and they don't pick the most obscure, but they pick like mid budget to big budget movies that no one yeah. fucking remembers. And they yeah, just release exactly. those. Yeah, and it, and it, and they definitely need revisited and remastered, you know, because I don't know, I, I I'm in my 40s and stuff, and I love going back and watching older films. It's, I mean, yeah. you don't really see too many modern day westerns that no. are that are enjoyable. I mean, horses are a pain in the ass, and like back in the day, they're just killing tons of horses, and it's just like nowadays, most yeah. people will be like, I ain't doing that, or I can't do that, or yeah. Well, this one you might get on your list. This is number four, and this is the four of the apocalypse. The Fulci. Uh, they were four outcasts with a single purpose: survival. Stubby Preston, professional card sharp. Clem, the drunk. Bunny, a cheap prostitute. And Butt, the crazy. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't have a list without Fulci on there. He has done a, he has done uh, I think three westerns, and this is one of my all time favorites uh, from him, as far as like his westerns go. It has Fabio Testi and it has Thomas Millie in it, and they're like my favorite one of my favorite Italian actors. I absolutely love them, and and the film is just like Thomas Millie's character is just so brutal in this film. Like they're all it, it's just. Uh, uh, just a crazy film and you know Fulci you know Fulci's gore oh yeah Fulci's gore in there and it's just I think it's the classic and I don't I think that a German company released this on Blu-ray um yeah there's a Blu-ray print floating around yeah but it it hasn't been released in America yet on no no and it's Florinda Balkan and Michael J. Pollard are both on that too right Florinda Balkan's got to be the the female in the movie right um it says lynn frederick um who's the uh, female lead in that I, it's been a long time since i've seen I think, it i think that's who it is that says oh. lynn frederick on it no i mean michael j pollard is in it though too i remember that yes yes he was in uh uh sleepaway he's been a ton of stuff sleepaway cam well oh, he's in um, scrooge he's the guy that freezes scrooge. in the fucking yeah, yeah in the yeah yeah he yeah and it's funny because thomas million i saw an interview with him and he he praised him a he's lot. He's a great actor, that guy. Yeah, he, he praised him a lot. Now he was kind of like iffy about Fabio. And, Fabio's I mean, a pretty boy, and he, I, you yeah. know what I mean. He's like a big, pretty, yeah. handsome guy. And and Thomas Milan's like a, I would say he's yeah. almost like a method actor. Yes, and you could tell that there was kind of some tension between the both of them uh, on that film. But they're both amazing actors. Just just absolutely amazing different styles I, I, for sure too very very different styles but they but they worked well together in this film you know it's just um i i, I know that people a lot of people have seen this film but anybody that hasn't seen this film they definitely need to put it on their watch list because it's just uh you know it's brutal it's too movie. yeah brutal a lot of knifings uh bloody bloody squib shots you know just typical fulci gore so and it was it was made in 1975 too and I think that was is glorious out of all his westerns. As, yeah, as, Silver as, Saddle as, is the other one, and then he has the one with ne- Franco Nero. And who's the other? Is it George? Master- it's George Hilton. George Hilton and Franco Nero, was, right? Was that was that Massacre Time? Massacre Time. That, that, that movie's that awesome. Called? Yeah. Yeah. That movie's yeah. awesome. Anything with, anything with Franco Nero is awesome. So yeah. you can't you can't go wrong with even that, Kioma. So. Yeah, that, that, that film is good. I, I it's not as gory as this one, but it, it is it is amazing. So. Yeah, I remember the at the very end he does the jump, the flip over the fucking table. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, that 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 is pretty funny. Um, this is this is another well known film. I told you I'd be getting into some other ones that are you know pretty well known, but um, I wanted to make some of them kind of difficult. And this is number three, and it is Cutthroats Nine. <laughs> This film, acclaimed by critics as the most violent motion picture ever portrayed on the screen. (laughs) Cutthroats 9. And I'm sure you've seen this. Like a lot of people say, hey, this is the goriest Western ever made. I disagree. 
Um, I, I think it's a well-made film. There's a lot of Italian actors. It was actually made in Spain, but there's a lot of Italian actors in this film. And I, and I think it's, um, it's, it's, it's pretty well done. I mean, it has a good story. Uh, the acting's good. And then from what I read, um, I guess that they shot this film and then the director went back a few years ago and added more gore to it. Really? That's what I, yeah. Yeah. That's my understanding. Like, he he upped it because it was it was released in 1972, but I think it was re-released in 1975. Don't give me I, don't. I, I think you're it. probably right. They do that a lot, but I mean this movie I remember pretty well because all the bad guys are on a chain gang. Yeah, and like there's, yeah, yeah. It's really fucking. It's it's pretty good. And then like there's oh they have different levels. It's kind of like the Dirty Dozen if they were all Victor Franco from the book and wanted to kill the <laughs> Marvin. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a it's a great western. I mean I don't think it's the glorious, but it is pretty. Pretty gory for 1972. I mean, you can't go wrong. And I know what was it? Uh, Code Red put it out on Blu-ray. Yeah, I have that blue. It's a cool movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's definitely if you're if you're a friend or a, a fan of Western films, bloody or not, that's definitely one to have in the collection. You know, it's it's a it's a classic. You can't you can't go wrong with it. You know, it's it's entertaining, gory as shit. All right, this one this one is is. Um, this one is great. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen this. I'm not going to be surprised if you have or haven't seen this, but it's called The Real Zombie Revolver by made by the Escoria Films guys from Spain. Have you heard of it? No. Or seen it? No. No. I, no. <laughs> Oh man, you have you ever seen Escoria any Escoria films like Fist of Jesus and I might have seen Fist of Jesus. That's a short, right? And on the Yeah. Did they do the one on the beach where like there's a and they kill it's like Brutal Brutal Relax. Yes. Yes, yes, I've seen that. And they also did Banana Motherfucker. Same people or different people? Uh, I think that's I think that's South America. That's oh, South yeah, America. That's South America. This, but this, I did see Brutal Relax. Yeah, yeah. It, it, if you guys have never seen Escora films, you need to you need to watch them. They're just amazing. A lot of their films, if you get on the YouTube, they post probably majority of their films on their on their YouTube page for free, and they're English. A lot of them are English subtitled too. So, um, real real zombie revolver isn't. Um, on there, but it, I know you'd love this, Dave. It, it's a mix between, um, like the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, burial ground and dead alive. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is like a horror movie, um, Western and there's, and the zombies look like Fulci or not Fulci. They look like the zombies from burial ground. And it's just, the gore is so over the top. It is just, it's like dead alive gore. And it's just amazing film, just just bloodbath, just a complete bloodbath. I have to have this movie. Is that real with the R E A L or E E L? It is R E A L. I found Zombie. it. Did you find it? Two thousand five. Yep. Two thousand five. And we I think did. they sell it. I think they sell it. If you go on the uh, Escoria Films uh, Facebook page, there's a link to their website, and they sell it on there. So it's you can get it. It's not hard to find. Oh, dude, I'll have to check this out. Oh yeah, you'll love it. It's just, it's a total bloodbath. Just a, just amazing. Just the zombies are cool. They just, they put a lot of heart into this. And these guys don't have a lot of money either. But it, their, their films are just amazing. I love them. Yeah, that brutal them. relax short was fucking bonkers. It was really entertaining. Yeah. It's the guy with the mustache. He's a bald guy and he's trying to relax and he just like, goes nuts. There's like yeah, monsters he- that come out of the water, right? Yeah, because his, his counselor tells him he needs a vacation. He ends up going to this beach and like these um, humanoids of the deep monsters come out of the ocean and start killing everybody. And he just he just loses his shit and starts killing them all. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. So, yeah, that's my number two. That that film is just just so wild and just I I mean if you, if you love gore and you love western movies, even if you don't like western movies. And you just like a gore fan of gore, it it the left definitely delivers the gory goods on that. So it's very entertaining. They did a great job. So that's my number two. So can you guess 
what my number one would be. Is it a classic? Um, it is a classic. Is it Wild Bunch? You're right. It's the Wild Bunch. It has to be. <laughs> It is the Wild Bunch. Uh, you can't really you can't really talk about a gory Western film without talking about the Wild Bunch. That has an all star cast. Um, it was made in 1961. I think it was originally 69. Rated, or 69. Sorry, yeah, it was it originally was rated X. Yep. For the violence. So, you know, you got Ernest Borgo in there. You got um, who else is in this? William film? Holden, Holden uh, Warren yeah. Oates, Ben Johnson, Edmund O'Brien. Uh, Strother Martin, LQ Jones, um, Bo sure Hopkins. Can. It's it's my favorite movie that's a non-horror movie. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's my favorite oh. non-horror movie. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it's just, it's just you, you know, it's it's an amazing film. Now, now, granted, like, there's other Westerns that I really love, the stories-wise, like a lot of the Italian Westerns, but this film is is definitely different from, like, the typical Western film. And the ending is just a total bloodbath. And it's just a really entertaining film and just just action the whole way through. And the character development and the characters are just amazing in this film. And when they put it out on Blu-ray, I was like, I jumped on that shit quick because it's just an all time classic film. So, yeah, you can't um, beat it. The yeah. slow motion, the way it's edited, the, like you actually feel like genuinely pain when people get shot, which is how you should feel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it gives you chills. It's, it's, it it's intense. It is. I just wanted to go through a couple honorable mentions, if you don't mind. Oh, go ahead. I, we, we don't really have to talk about them. I'm just going to go through the list real quick, and I'll, I'll see if you saw any of them. The honorable mentions, number one, A Man Called Blade. You talked about that, directed by Sergio Martino. Uh, Soldier Blue. Love 19- Soldier Blue. Great movie. Soldier Blue. Yeah, that was another one. The Hunting Party. That was the um, one I was going to say. If you had it on your list and I forgot to put it down, I was going to be pissed. Love The Hunting Party. Yep, Hunting Party. Deadly Trackers, 1973. Is that a Mitchum? That, was, um, that had, I can't remember who was in that. Not in Robert, that. but his kid, right? Uh, i never seen it, but I, I think, or is that yeah. the uh, Richard Harris? Richard Harris, yes. Richard yeah. Harris was in that, yes. And it's a PG, PG Western, but it was gory as hell. Um, What's that, the one, The Last of the Hard Men? Have you seen that one? No, I didn't. With Charlton didn't Heston? See. That's a good no, one. No, I heard I about it that. on a, what was it? Pure Cinema. Elric Kane, if you ever listen to that, he said that, and, and I watched that. It's a really good one, too. It's like a, a group of criminals are after him, and shit. I can't remember who the bad guy is in it. It's okay. a big actor. It's like James Colburn or something. Oh, really? I think it is him. Oh, that's wild. Well, Deadly Trackers, number four. Uh, El Topo. I had to put that in there. Love El Topo. Like a crazy film. And number six was Bone Tomahawk. That was more of a recent film. Love it. And the last one was Django Unchained. That's a glory film. Love it. Uh, yep. Those were the honorable mentions. So that those are my lists. Yeah, all those movies I absolutely love that you named that I've seen on there and the honorable mentions. And I thought after I wrote the list, I was like, fuck, I thought of Django. I thought I didn't think of Bone Tomahawk, which is fucking dumb because that was like my favorite movie that came out that year. Yeah, yeah, that's an amazing film. So here's my list. Okay. Uh, Massacre Time because I panicked. That was the last one I wrote. Hey, that's good. That's a good one. Number nine, Scarlet Worm. You ever heard of a place called Clay's Drinking Billiards? Mm, I can't say I have. This place is in line for some hard judgment. That's so. It's fact. They've been taking their soil does when they swell up with child. And they've been... They got these tools. That, look, there's this little foreign no-count son of a bitch running the place, and he's been killing those girls' babies. This fellow's really asking for it, isn't he? That he is. You want me to make an example of him? I want you to make an example out of every goddamn son of a bitch in one of them. And when you're through, burn that place to the ground. Oh, yeah. You know what? I, I, the Unearth put that out. Yeah. That was a good That was a good film. Yeah. I remember it being real that. gross and weird and shit. And I was like, yeah. well, that sounds like something off the beaten path that you might put on your list. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, for the Apocalypse. Got that. Yep. 
uh, Cole Pepper Counter. Uh, is it like the Cole Pepper Count Cattle Company? Have you seen that one? No, I never did. That's a no, good movie. Never... And you mentioned how that small town they had like uh, how they like they helped this small town. This young kid, it's like coming of age. He, it's like these kind of like bandits. He ends up help, like them working with this cattle company and like this this like group of like assholes are coming in to push him out of the way and they convince he convinces these guys these bad guys to help him out help this missionary group out and like there's a big bloody shootout at the end it's got great uh J um, who jeffrey lewis in it lewis skew um who the fuck matt clark there's a bunch of like character actors it's really good it's a pretty cool one wow yeah i never even heard of that i'm gonna have to put that on my list yeah that sounds wild number six the wild bunch <laughs> yeah that's a yeah, it's classic can't go wrong with that Number five, a movie that I've always considered a modern Western that most people don't, The Devil's Rejects. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, that is. It is kind of like a Western if you think about it. Yeah, I never thought about that. And I, I think it's Rob Zombie's best movie, too. It is, by far, by far. I mean, I like most of his movies, except the last two are like, eh, like take or leave <laughs> it. I, I don't hate Three from Hell, but fucking, what was it? 31 was a turd. I kind of gave up after the witch one that he did he put out. I kind of quit watching them, but I, I'll eventually get to them someday. Um, White Apache. Okay. I went. That I want one, one of them. I couldn't that remember was, the other. One. That was close. That was close. You know. Um, one that I hear is real weird, but I didn't watch. Wicked Die Slowly. Uh, yeah, that sounds familiar, but I just don't think I've ever seen that. I mean, it's a Code Red put it out, and it's supposed to be pretty like graphic. I didn't know how violent, but not you know. Yeah, you'll yeah definitely you have to send me your list because I'm I don't have to look into some of these because I I don't think I ever heard that one. I've heard the title, but I don't think I've ever heard of it. Number two, the Cutthroats Nine. There you go. I got three. You got three. And number one, the Proposition. Oh, you know what? I is that is that a um. Is that, Australian. Is, that the, is that made in the 50s? No. Or the, or the 60s? No, this one. This one's newer. Has Guy Pierce oh. came out like 20 years oh. ago? Yes, yes, yes. Is is that where he's a? Um, is he a preacher in that? No, that's Brimstone. That movie's awesome. Okay. Okay. I should have put Brimstone on the list. He he strangles a guy with his own guts. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't come to my head. And I went to bat for that movie. I was on the summer series. I went to bat for it. And I'm, but yeah. Huh. No, yeah, Proposition's but... the one with uh, Danny. Is it Danny Houston, Guy Pierce, and um, in the very beginning, somebody's head gets exploded, like oh, completely. Yeah? yeah. Wow. I'm gonna have to watch that. I, I I've heard of that, but I just never got the chance to watch that. But now, I'm going to. So it sounds. It's it's a good movie. Wild. I think you'll there... like it. Um, yeah, I think you named a lot of the other westerns I was thinking of that were they're fairly violent. I mean, there's a lot of westerns I like though too. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to do something different. Like you know, I, I, I was I, I've been on kind of a Western kick lately, and um, I try to like mention them online to people. Just you know, some people are into them, some people aren't. But I, I mean, I grew up watching like you know all the the, the Sergio films with Clint Eastwood, and um, you know, I was a huge spaghetti Western fan, and you know, I just I love Western films, and I I, I constantly watch them. I'm always looking for new stuff, and I was like, ah, you know what? People won't really talk about gory westerns, and there's a bunch out there. So I thought that would be a good title for you. And I kn I knew that you your knowledge of cinema is like, yeah, he'll he'll get some of these. I knew I knew you would. I don't. Uh, I, I'm not like an expert on anything. I just dabble in a lot. I do know like certain subjects well, but a lot of subjects I'm blind on. But I can I can hold my own a little bit. I knew I wasn't gonna fail completely unless you kept going with those Mexican <laughs> westerns. <and> that was <laughs> <fun. I> was, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I like I said, I, I wanted to put some stuff on there that uh, that I figured you would probably get to, and also put some stuff on there that people didn't know about just to get it out there, you know. Oh, yeah. so, so people can go out and check this stuff out if they're fans of that stuff. That's you know that's what my group's about is finding new stuff, you know. Because I remember before I would be like trying to find stuff and I couldn't find stuff and it got frustrating because I knew that there was a lot of stuff out there. And then whenever the internet came out and stuff and you got to do research. You know, word of mouth, like before, whenever I was a kid, like we go to the video store and there'd be a shit ton of tapes on the wall. You didn't know what was good and what oh. wasn't. You just had to rent shit, you know. So it, you had to go by word of mouth. But then whenever the Internet came along, it made it a lot easier for research. Oh, you it know, was but, impossible to figure out like directors like you'd have to yeah. like the shitty movie books you'd be going through. And you'd be like, yeah. so this guy directed all these. And yep. then you I'd always circle. Right. I'd circle them yep. in the books and then go up to the video stores and be like. Can you guys get me dead is dead? And they'd be like, dead is dead? 
the fuck is dead is dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was difficult. You know what I mean? Like you just kind of, you got either base it on the cover of cover art of the film and it turned out to be a big turd. And then you're like, Oh man, this sucks. And then sometimes you'd find something that didn't have a cool cover and it was pretty awesome. No, so, no. you know, the worst it, is it, when you rented a movie and you couldn't see it. Like you put it in and it was so dark. Usually those 60 movies that were put on tape, you couldn't even yeah. watch. You're like, I can't see a thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was a, definitely an issue in that era. So, yeah, it's it's cool now that you, you you have a lot of networking and you got a lot of people that you can you know find stuff, but it just it really kind of irritates me whenever I like post stuff on films and people are like, well, where can I get it at? <laughs> well, you know, do some research, you know, <laughs> you know, just go check Amazon or eBay. You know, you might be able oh. to find it. You I know what kills me? That. You have to you have to actually post the link in the comments. I'm like, okay, here, you know, you don't want to do the work. I'll make it easy for you. I'll, I'll post it for you. So. What kills me was when Severin or like Vinegar Syndrome's like, what do you guys want put on Blu-ray? And people just post like Blu-rays that were released last year. I'm like, are you fucking stupid? They're like Alligator. They're like release Alligator. It's like it was just released. All you got to do is go to Blu-ray.com, search a movie. Yep. Oh, it's already released. Yep. Yep. What the fuck? Yeah, whenever every time I put stuff on those lists, they just look at it like, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> yeah, it's like, all right, I'm like, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not putting anything else on there, you know. So, like, same with like, with, like Unearth, you know. I, I threw a couple of names out there, and, and uh, Stephen didn't bite on them because uh, I was like, yeah, there's some, there's some good shit out there that you know I think would do well on Unearth. That he likes a lot of Asian stuff, and I was like, you know, I was like, there's some good shit out there, but just got to be willing to try to track down the person uh, who directed it and get the rights to it. Well, so. He also says a lot of those are owned by Yakuza. So yeah, well, yeah, I mean, Hey, I mean, they're out there. It's just, it's just getting the rights to them. You know, yeah. some of, some of them are, some of them, some of the films that, that I've seen that are Asian films, they definitely um, cross the lines in, in some of the subject matter. Oh, so. even if they, cause they can't show like nudity. But it, like the guy I watch, like I've seen like a uh, probably a dozen of his movies. He's the Yasu Sato. Yes, they're fucking so perverted. Like I'm watching yeah. them, I'm just like, like I love them, but I don't know why. Like I, I feel like it, it talks to my inner pervert when I watch them. Like they're so all they are is voyeur and it, like weird fucking fetish things, but they're also twisted. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't know, man. Some of the, some of those films, especially the Japanese films. I did you see the uh, the um noisy rec rec room no you said that was good though right oh, it's like man, two hours that, isn't it it's almost three hours long and i tried telling people i was like it's three hours long but you will not be bored the three hours because that's the only film that just keeps getting more fucked up as the film goes on like that's the film that i told Stephen Byro he should release because it never really got a proper release it took the director like four or five years and it's just it's a masterpiece but it's a fucked up masterpiece. <laughs> and there's that guy who did like 20, 30 fucking movies and they all look twisted as fuck, like uh, Violated Angels. He's the Asian guy, right? Yeah. He has like fucking 50 movies and they all, like yeah. Koji, Koji, he has like fucking 50 movies. I'm looking at the titles and I'm like, Violent Virgin, Go Go, Vir all his movies look insane. Yeah, yeah. Those, those are great films. I know exactly what you're talking about. Those are wild. And it, it would be nice if somebody would pick them up in, the, in America, maybe someday, but yeah. Yeah, or, there's there, there's a ton of that stuff out there. It or is. or what about the shit that's like um like uh the the Japanese shorts that were done on video like Gaki Dama? Have you seen that one? The Demon mm. Within. It's just a little Gremlins ripoff, but it's a fucking Japanese oh, Gremlins ripoff. Yeah. Yes, I did see that. Does he is he like stalking a woman? Yeah, yeah, they fight. In the, yeah, yeah, that was awesome. There's tons of yeah, shit like that. Yeah, it is entertaining. Really entertaining. Or 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 Cyclops. Did you ever see Cyclops? No, there's there's like five or six that I've been meaning to watch, and I want to do them all together. Gozu, Cyclops, Biotherapy, and Cotton. Those all those look like all good ones. Yeah, those are all amazing, all amazing films. You never saw those? No, but I have I have rips of them and stuff and bootlegs and shit that I've been. They're just like they're all like thirty to fifty minutes, and like I have so much shit I have to like have to review because like you got to think I have one I have to watch every week to pick a movie with somebody, and then I have a Patreon pick. And then I have to watch whatever retro year I'm watching, at least two or three of those. That's five right off the cuff. And then I have probably four or five movies I have to that were like sent to me that I feel I have to watch. That's like ten movies every week I'm obligated to watch already. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 I, I don't know how you do it, man. <laughs> I wish, I wish I had the time to watch like you did, man. You're, you're my hero when it comes to that stuff because 
I, I wish I could just take a whole month off and I would just straight watch film, but I just, I have a family. I work full time. Oh yeah. I, I don't have it. a family. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's tough. And I, I, I try to watch at least on my days off two or three films a night. And then it's like, I fall asleep. So I fall asleep during everything now. Like dude. if I put a movie on at five o'clock, I'm like this. I'm like that dude in Terminator 2 after he gets shot. I'm like, <gasps> no, literally, yeah. I am. I can't help. Yeah, it. yeah. You, you, uh, you. It's awesome that you're that you're doing this. Still, you know, you're, you're reviewing all this stuff. I, I appreciate it. I, I, I love the fact that you, you know you, you're doing all your reviews, and Man. because like I, like I said, I discovered your channel years ago when you did the uh, zombie intro when you're sitting up with your hair was all long. I, I remember discovering your channel and I just, you inspired me to do reviews because I was like, wow, this guy really knows his shit. Well, you, you were like, I, I know better movies than him. Like, cause you do no. more obscure <laughs> movies than me. No, no, no. I, I, I was just amazed that you, you were covering a lot of the indie stuff and the underground stuff, which wasn't really wasn't well known at the time. Like people weren't really doing that. You were kind of like kind of groundbreaking doing that. And you, and you're still doing that. And that's just, that's just so amazing. And we, I, we you know, the independent world needs more people like you because, you know, there is a lot of people that do reviews, but you you cover a lot of a lot of independent stuff, a lot of underground stuff. But you also do cover like, the, you know, some of the stuff that's well known, which is pretty cool, too, because some films I don't know about because I don't really watch a lot of mainstream stuff. Yeah. But, but or well known stuff. But whenever you, you know, you're like, hey, this film is pretty good. Then I'm like, I'm paying attention because, you know, you have similar tastes that. You yeah, know, that I do too. Well, you know, some you watch somebody like, well, I know they like this stuff. I don't like that, but they like this stuff too, and I'm into that. So like, you pick and choose what like. But I, I feel bad because I haven't been covered as many indie movies as I used to. I used to do a, like everything, but I haven't been doing it as much. But I feel like not many people are putting them out like they used to either. Yeah, you're you're right. You're right. It it, it is. It seems like um, since COVID kind of hit, it seems like everything kind of it, it went to a standstill. I mean, you're right. It. I was thinking about the other day. There seemed like that there was like an independent film coming out every month or every yeah. week, but now it's it's it seems like it's kind of like far in between that, you know, there's not a lot coming out. So hopefully that picks up again because, you know, I have faith in the scene. I mean, I know it's kind of hit it had highs and lows, and there's, you know, there's people that you know are still have passion like myself and you. So I'm, I have hope for the future. I'm hoping it, you know, people still want to make low budget and independent films so yeah i mean for sure i mean if, if it came along i definitely would want to be in more and help with more but you know time like you said it's time like you like oh, i fucking do i take my week like my you get three weeks vacation a fucking year you're like taking one week off when you don't spend it with your friends and family you're like and then they're dead and then like now i feel like a dickhead because you know what i mean yeah you're absolutely right with the time thing you know um, it, it, it sucks you know whenever you're trying to you you want to get done with a film but you're not like people don't have huge budgets. So it's like, you've got to spread it out. And then, you know, your family wants to go to the beach for vacation and you're like, well, shit, I got to get this movie done. You know, it's like that your family doesn't want to hear that, you know? So it's, they want right. ice cream. They don't give a fuck about your movie. Yeah. yeah they don't want to, they don't want, they don't want to hear that shit. They want to go on vacation. So it's kind of, it's kind of difficult, but you know, I, I, I'm, tr I'm trying to get stuff done and, and I take my time. A lot of people are like, well, when's this film coming out? When's this film come out? they don't understand that I work full time. I work overtime. I have a family, you know, it's, it's just, it's whenever I can. Oh, plus like crew, they all work and they have families. So it's hard to, you know, it's hard to get everybody on the same page. You know, you know, you, yeah, you, yeah, for sure. You've been, you, you've been in a ton of films and you know how it is. So, you know, I need to get to three indie movies. I've been sent. I got the Symbolicus volume one and two. I really need to watch those. Yeah. My short, my short family home evenings on uh volume two. Yeah, and I need to watch fucking Maggot's new movie I bought like a year and a half ago and I haven't watched. I'm actually in his short film in volume one and on, on that. So hmm, his there. film, uh, which one? Open the Mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the newest one, uh, right? You, you need to put that on the top of your list. That film is just amazing. Amazing film. You you need to check that out. Try it's to, kind try of to... surprising how his movies aren't reviewed more because like if you, they're really, really solid movies. I know. I, he he is. I call him the um, Jim Morrison of the underground because he is just his films are just so amazing. And like I was a fan of him, his work before I actually met him. And then I met him probably about eight years ago. 
and we, we we struck up a pretty good friendship and it's like it's just so amazing to work with him and see him work and what like seeing what's inside his mind that makes these films it's just it was it's just such a great experience and i'm just so happy that it, uh he's my friend and, and he's helped me with my film and i've been in his films now and it's just like i, I don't get that that people don't know who he is like whenever i talk about his films and people are like who who's that and you know he, he's well known for maggot and mortem august underground mortem and the thing is that that blows my mind it's like he he's made other films like and then i helped and he's done he's devil's like, night, devil's night yeah. and, you know our devil's night and he he's done all these fantastic let's make a horror film he's done all these amazing films and people don't even a lot of people don't even know who he is and i'm like i i find that hard to believe because he's a huge staple in the underground community and like there was a few years ago he was invited uh, there was a convention in uh pennsylvania uh, outside of pittsburgh and he wasn't even invited to this convention and at the last minute these people are like hey we got an open spot if you want to you know you want a table there and i was like what the fuck? what is wrong with you people you know what, and who what else was at the convention uh i think i think Brian Pollan was there. Um, Fred Vogel was there. Um, there, you know, it was just a lot of there was a lot of independent, uh, you know, names there. And I was like, why weren't you on the top of the list? You know, you or at been... least on the list with like Pollan yeah. and stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Because yeah. he makes yeah. movies at that level too. I mean, Bob Brian Pollan's movies are awesome too. Oh yeah, yeah. Brian Pollan's films are amazing. But you know, it's it's it, it just blows my mind because you know he he's just such an amazing filmmaker and his films are just so wild and so crazy and he, and he makes films from the heart a lot of people don't know that he makes films from his heart and and, and his experiences in life he takes his life experiences and translates them to film and that's very hard to do and and, and he's definitely an artist like he's not a yeah. he's an artist like you can tell oh yeah he is and I, you've met him before right yeah a few times a few times at yeah. wasteland he's really friendly yeah yeah he's a great guy a lot of you know, a lot of people are scared of him. Well, the know, first time I met him, he was him. intimidating because he was drunk. But then, like, afterwards, like, he doesn't really drink anymore. So he was always super, like, energetic and friendly. But the one time I first saw him, he was fucked up. But that, everybody's was, fucked up at Wasteland, so. I was going to say, was that at Wasteland? I think he told me that story one time about being pretty drunk at Wasteland. So He was he was tra- talking to Jim Van Beber, and they were both, like, drunk in the lobby. And I filmed him like a dickhead. And I was like, back in the day, you don't think that. You're like, nowadays, I don't like sticking a camera in people's faces because I think, if I'm like, get the fucking fade out of my face. You know what I mean? You don't think about it. Hey, I'd, I'd love to see that video if you ever get a chance. It's on a... <laughs> I think Meg had asked me for it years ago. He said, do you have that footage without like just unedited? And I sent it to him. Oh, okay. I'll it's on, it was it. on YouTube. It was just one of yeah. the wastelands or whatever it was. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll definitely have to check that out. You know, I'd like to see it. That probably would be pretty entertaining because Jim Van Bever, he's, he's pretty entertaining too. <laughs> yeah. It's only a few seconds though on there, but uh, okay. for, we'll get in the tournament for okay. you. I had about 12 names that I was whittling it down, and I was like, I only have to have eight for a tournament, you know, like a bracket works. Okay. So I picked kind of indie psychos, um, serial killers, slashers, but they're really low budget. I'm sure you've seen every movie. Sometimes they'll be a tag team. There'll be two of them. Okay. They have to face against each other. So, okay, here we go. The first one up. I'll, let me. I'll pull out two names at once and try to set up the fight to see if I can set it up in a in a, in a sensical thing, right? Okay. I hope I can do good on these. No, you. It, you ever who you ever want to win. Whoever you think will win the fight goes oh. to the next round. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. I got you. And then the the winner of that you know. the first fight fights the winner of the second fight until we get the final two. Uh, I got you. I'm, I got you now. Great. Uh, I don't know how the fuck I can set this one up. Okay, so uh, basically, <laughs> I can't set this up. It's going to be real sloppy. Um, Peter Mountain and Alan Peters from August Underground are looking for a new camera. They find okay. one in the one ads, and it is David from Pieces of Talent, and they end up having to fight to the death. Remember, David is clever with the cameras and stuff, but he yeah. is against, he's against two. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with David because 
you're right. He was uh, he he was he was a master at setting up traps for people. And uh, the guys from August Underground were kind of sloppy. They were getting drunk and stuff, and they were kind of running around doing their thing. So I, I would I would yeah I would go with him. I, oh, I think that he would win a fight. He would because I think that he would sneak attack those guys and come on I got some. you know if they were they they might be stumbling down the road drunk or something and he'd catch them off guard. <laughs> oh, so that's crazy. That's kind of an upset right there. Yeah, I would go with him. You know, at first I was going to go with the guys from August Underground, but then I was thinking about how they would always get intoxicated and they get drunk and they would use drugs and that clouds your mind. So David, he didn't seem like he was like that in, in that movie. He was kind of clear headed. And he and he was very smart. So, I'm not saying those guys from August Underground were smart, but they were uh, fucking crazy. They were young. Yeah, they were degenerate, they were, right? They were crazy, but they just didn't care. And this, he, I think they, I think he would be more of a person that would plan out his uh, his killing his killing methods with those guys if he saw them on the street. I think you're right. So, okay, this one's a pretty wild fight. We have the headless killer from Headless. Versus the BTK killer from Gutter Balls. Oh, man. Oh, boy, that's a tough one. <laughs> I thought this was good. Uh, I, I didn't know it was going to be this difficult. <laughs> I would have was thinking about it. Um, I'm going to go with the BTK, BTK killer from uh, Gutter Balls because... He, I don't know. I just think that he would have been, I think he would just be a better killer for, for the headless guy. I mean, the headless guy was crazy as hell, but I don't know. The BT killer, he was kind of more slick at things, I guess. You know, he, he was able to catch people off guard more than the, the killer from headless because he kind of just, I don't know. He was kind of just too crazy, I guess you could say. Too crazy killer. I mean, he, I mean he'd get sloppy or something. <laughs> he cut his own face off at the end, right? Yeah, exactly. I think that he's just too crazy. The, the, the killer from Gutter Balls, he, he, was, he was crazy, but he was smart crazy, I guess. <laughs> and we're going with Dan smart, Ellis. Though, we're going happened? to Dan Ellis in the costume, not anybody else, right? Yeah, yeah, Dan, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Dan was, Dan was a smart killer. All right. So uh, next here. Uh, this one, we have the photographer from Murder Set Pieces. Okay. Versus Harry fucking Russo from Necromaniac and Schizophreniac. Oh. That's a good one, man. <laughs> you didn't that think you were going to hear Ron, Harry Russo. <laughs> Ron, Ron, Ron Atkins, man. his that, that was such a great series. Nothing nothing against Murder Set Peary, uh, Pieces, but... I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with him as the as the winner of that uh, from the murder set pieces. Now that guy from murder set pieces was pretty jacked, but so was uh, Harry from um, the schizophrenia video or uh, films. He was he was pretty big guy too, but he was just he was just fucking crazy. The favorite my favorite one of my favorite scenes was when he goes to that taco place and goes up to the to the uh, that's so fucked up. <laughs> To the to the to the lady. I think it was real too because I think it was too. He went up to the lady and she's like, Can I take your order? He goes, I want one taco hard like my dick. And she's like, Excuse me? He's like, Give me a hard taco. <laughs> that Dude. was that was one of the greatest moments. And that in in the in that film, those films like that guy, that guy, he was just so he played such a great madman. He had so much energy. He must have been like I'm not saying that he was doing drugs, but it seemed like he was he was blasting crank or coke or something to get that level of intensity because he was such a he played such an amazing madman that those films are just a lot of people don't know those films and those films are just amazing. I mean, I, I like Murder Set Pieces too. That's a great film, but those those films are just those those schizophrenia films are just so fucking nuts. No, There's so actually nuts. a third one too. He was in uh, the Cuckoo Clocks of Hell, which was yeah. the uh, the sequel with to Jim, yeah with Jim Van Bever. Yeah, Jim Van Bever was in that, and that that was crazy too. That film was crazy. I'd like, be worried about that. watching that one again, like how it aged. You'd be like, mm. like some of the <laughs> shit in that movie. Like I can only imagine. Like you're like, oh, oh yeah, that that film that that film would get ripped apart if people started watching that again. There's a lot of um, a lot of a lot, lot of, of fucked up shit in it. Yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff that would kind of people would think nowadays would probably cross the line but it, they are crazy films and I, I really enjoy those 
I haven't watched him in a long time, but I just remember Harry Russo was such a memorable Harry, character. Him and Le- Leather, what was it, Leatherneck, his doll? The was thing that, of, was that what they called it? Le- I think so. Every word, every line he says in that movie is so fucked up you can't quote him. Like you can't. I like that the hard taco dick thing is probably the the most PC thing he says in the whole fucking yep. thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I would. I, I used to talk to Ron Atkins um, a few years ago, and he kind of went on a different direction of filmmaking. He kind of um, he didn't really go into specifics, but um, he's making a film about I guess Jesus. So he kind of, he kind of, which, hey, you know, I, I whatever I you want to do. Yeah, I didn't have, I, when he talked to me, he goes, I know you're a fan of my older films, but I'm not going in that direction anymore. And I was like, hey, I, I got much respect for you as a filmmaker. I was like, whatever you want to do. Um, but he, but he was a real big fan of the uh, Night of the Living Dead um, Savini version. And I got a, I had a couple extra uh, media book Blu rays from Germany and, he wanted one of them and I sent him one and he sent me a huge box of all his films and t-shirts, posters, all this shit that like, he rare... was friendly online. I remember yeah, he was very yeah. friendly. Yeah. He sent me all that. And like, I, I will never give that stuff up. That stuff will stay in my collection forever. So, so yeah, I, Ron's a great guy. He had death rattle, LSD, uh, eat the mm-hmm. rich, um, darkest soul nights or whatever and then yeah. he had the three uh schizophrenic movies and uh yep. mutilation mile Mutilation mile that's a wild film too that's a real crazy film it's been a long time since i watched those movies but man like i said i don't know how they're gonna age on people like yeah i don't with the pc stuff man i, I don't think they're gonna age very well because there's a lot of racial slurs and stuff in it and, yeah and but it doesn't stuff. matter because they nobody knows what they are because they didn't make it in that uh fucking iceberg so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only people base what they watch off that iceberg, apparently. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, I accidentally put two BTKs in here. I don't know why I'm dumb. But I had two names I took out of the hat. And I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with uh, the one I took out, Mashburn and Mercer from American Holocaust. Okay. The Vat Killers. Yeah. And they're going to go against Torment and Agony from Her Name Was Torment too. Ooh. Mm. I, I'm gonna have to go with the with the girls from Torment Two. Um, that that film and that film I remember watching that film. Um, when it first got released, it's been a, it's been a few years since I saw it. it. It came out what probably about five years ago, something like that. Five Three, six years, years ago, something like that. I can't remember. But the scene. And that film that got me was the scene with you, (laughs) with your fingers. You know, you know what I'm talking about. That that was gut wrenching to watch, and 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 the level of torture from those women were just insane. I I think that they would be the winners because they just they 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 just just fucked shit up, man. In those films, like, and it was and, and those films are crazy too because. Um, she's pr- pretty much naked the whole time she's like torturing people and it's like it's there's like a sexual element to them but it isn't like a good sexual thing <laughs> no no it's like, not like if like, you're like, rubbing you're it off gonna, then you, you got problems and, yeah you're not gonna sit there and want to jerk off to these films or anything like that because um they're they're just the, the violence that dustin did on those films are just insane man that like Tor- her name is Torment. Actually, I like that film, but the second one better than the first. One. Second one's gorier. I do too. Oh yeah, yeah. And it, and like I said, your scene is the one that that the moment that stuck stuck out in my mind whenever I was watching. It. I'm like, oh man. I'm like, that was nasty as hell. So yeah, I'm gonna go with them uh, uh, as as uh, the winners of that fight. And the the American the American Holocaust. Uh, that film's great too. Those guys, I think those guys were kind of older though, so I think that 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 those girls were getting. And, and Mercer was kind of a fuck up, Bob Glazer's character. I think yeah, he was like yeah. jerking off and running. I think that he <laughs> would <laughs> jerking off with those guts. That's what I. That's pretty much the highlight I remember of, of that film is him jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you something about uh, Torment, like uh, too. Um, like I remember we were talking. I was like, now those characters are somewhat they're not supernatural but they there's something supernatural happening in the movie right yeah i can't yeah. spoil exactly because i don't even know 100 percent because i didn't get it but i asked i was like is my character human and they were like okay. well they don't want you to pl-. he's like some people are going to play it as human and some aren't i don't want you to play it like you're human that's why i didn't respond like i was human yeah 
So you did you, you did a great job. Well, I was great supposed job. to be like possibly an alien or something that they were looking for. That's why the response wasn't like begging them or screaming or anything. So yeah. You did, you did a really great job, and I want to bring up the fact that um, in that new short film that Dustin put out that you were in, you did you guys did a great job in that. What, I paying up uh, the one where you are are <laughs> the, the one where you paying, paying paying off your the money for losing yeah. your knife. Yeah, I I thought you guys that was a really really made short well made short. You you were I thought your acting was definitely um just really really good, man. You just you know, like like that role. I wasn't expecting you to be in a, a role like that. I guess that's why I thought that you did such an amazing job in that because I didn't really picture your character because your char- your character was kind of like a you were just kind of like a street guy. You're kind of like a guy that was like trash. You know, just, yeah, you, <laughs> he was you pretty trashy. Like, you were just it was just kind of like a, a a role that I didn't I think you like. You were just kind of like just like a just didn't give a fuck about anything. You were just kind of like I said, a street guy. And I, I thought you played that character just really well. Like you were just very well believable in that role. And I really enjoyed the storyline of that because it was just, it was so twisted and so weird. And, and it was, it was just, I like in the ending, like the ending was just great too, because it was like, cause you didn't know where the movie was going to go. Like I was like, yeah. where the hell is this going to go? Like, is he going to get murdered by these cult people or, you know, it's, it, it was just a really well-made short. And I, I worked with Dustin on, um, a short film um, a few years ago. And he's, he's a really nice guy. I like, I really enjoyed working with him on the crew. I did. Some he's smart too. Work. He's a, he's real yeah. smart. He, he was, he was great to work with. And um, I used to see him at wasteland, but I haven't seen him for a while. So it'd be nice to catch up with him. But uh, yeah, he, um, you guys, you guys nailed it. That was great. I, I, I know that one guy supposedly is supposed to release that. I don't know. It, it's on Vimeo happen. and stuff, but I mean, like a physical release. I would like to see it on, like, I'd like to get a copy on Blu-ray. Because well, there's like two really short cool. versions of that movie. Like, somebody else directed a short version, then someone else directed a feature length based on the same premise. I haven't seen the other okay. two. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would love to get a a copy of that because it was just, um, just, just so wild. <laughs> there there so was funny. another one he produced called Amy, which was another short. Okay. That we were yeah. in that we did, but, we, but, yeah. So. uh the next uh, bracket is David from Pieces of Talent versus the BTK Killer. Okay. Um. Oh boy, they're both smart killers. So. Um. Uh, I would say I'm gonna go with David again because I think that he might be a little bit smarter than the BTK Killer. Um, I think that he'll he would um, kind of manipulate him because that guy didn't really look like a killer. He kind of looked like a um, guy that would be in a band or something. So I like think a roadie maybe, or something. Yeah, he had that real long curly hair, and he wasn't really like you know he didn't look like a you know madman killer. So he might he might be deceptive that way with the BTK killer, and he might uh, manipulate him into not trying to kill him right off the bat and he might turn around and just shoot him or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or stab him or whatever. He, it's been a while since I watched pieces of town, but I know that he would probably get him. I'm going to go with him on that one. David's uh, making it a lot farther than I thought he would. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm going by, I'm going by smarts on this one. I mean, but your you logic killer, makes sense. You could be a killer and you could be a big guy, but if you're not smart about it, like, you know, you, you probably wouldn't go far, but I mean, the BTK killer was smart. He did have some really unique kills. I think my favorite one was the 69 kill he did. <laughs> I mean, you could be big and not smart and you end up like the guy in out of sight, the George Clooney yeah. movie that runs up the yeah. fucking stairs. <laughs> That's the best part of the whole movie. Um, we got a uh, torment and agony versus Harry Russo. Mm, it's getting harder now. Oh boy. I, I'm going to go with the girls from torment or because Harry, I think that they would be able to seduce Harry because he did like women. Now he did kill him, but I think that he would, they would get trick him enough to like seduce him to where he would let his guard down and get the best of them so okay because like I, I figured like if she showed up naked to his house then he would probably think that he was getting some ass 
and then they would, you know, stab him in the neck or whatever, knock him out and then torture him to death. So I'm going to go with them because I think that they would seduce him in a way to uh, take him out. Have you ever seen Ropper Stomper? Yes. I guarantee okay. Harry Russo dies exactly like Russell Crowe at the end where he's like, just like running around <laughs> for 10 minutes. And... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been a year since I saw that movie. Um, and the final is David from Pieces of Talent with Torment versus Torment and Agony from Her Name is Torment. Mm. Well, I'm going to go with the girls from Torment 2 on that because I think that didn't he have a he had a soft spot for that blonde hair girl and pieces of talent? Yeah. So I think that he would probably have a soft spot for the girls. He might think, you know, hey, these are victims of abuse, and he might let his guard down to get the best of them. I think that they would be the winner because um, because of that. So I'm going to go with them. I think that they would get the best of him um, because, like I said, he had that love interest. He didn't kill that blonde girl, and he was doing everything for her as, as far as I can remember. I remember he was, he basically, didn't he make a movie for her in the end? Yeah, and then he kill, was, killed her mom and everything. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, he killed her mom, but he, he let her live. <laughs> yeah, but she smoked a lot of cigarettes, so she basically had it coming. <laughs> yeah. that's, how, that's how killers think, man. They're just like, yeah, but he called me an asshole, so he had to die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's a good theory on that. That's pretty good. I, yeah, I agree that, 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 um. That makes sense. It definitely does. Yeah, I, I would. I would say yeah. That those girls, the, the girl that, from the torment, she's she's pretty. Um, she's pretty evil, man. That's a that's a pretty sinister character. So yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I I, th- I I agree that. I mean, you could be a big big guy killer, but get a good looking naked girl coming up to you, you might be caught off guard. You know. So yeah, and there's two of them too. Yeah. So. Yeah. You're 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 gonna you're gonna be caught off guard. So I mean that that it is what it is. Now going up against another female killer, that might be a different story. So, yeah, I probably should have thrown another one in there. Yeah, I was gonna say another female that might that might uh, that might be a little bit different. I should have thrown the Snuff It girl in there. I should have thrown the killers <laughs> from Snuff It in that movie. <laughs> yeah, those are those are some good good topics. Uh, you know that 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 really made me think about some stuff. So. And you're the only one that would have got all those references. Yeah. Yeah. And I forgot, and I forgot about this. I'm not, didn't forget, but re thinking about the schizophrenia movies. I'm going to have to pop those in again and check those out because those are great films. The nuts movies, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, they are. And that's funny. And I'm, I'm, that's pretty cool that you, you know, you pick some stuff that I haven't watched from quite a few years, like pieces of talent. It's been a while since I've seen that. And they were supposed to do a sequel to that, but I, I don't know what happened. I actually donated money to that, and it never got made, which happens. I, I did too, I think. But that's the thing is, like, everybody loves the movie, and then when they come to ask for donations, nobody fucking wants to do it. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a lot of that going on in the indie world that um, that I have, uh, there, I have some problems with. And I got burned quite a bit. I got burned on the Gutter Balls 3 thing, and I got burned on um, – a couple other projects, actually Tom Savini's project, I got burned on yeah, both Nightmare of those City, projects. Nightmare City, and then he was doing that Zombie Island thing. I got burned on those, and um, I got burned on that Dario Argento Sandman. I mean, I, I, I just don't think that's right that people they should at least refund the film isn't going to be made. You know, refund the well, people. Nicholson money. makes sense because he died. Well, yeah, he died, but I mean, he was. I know he was having health problems and stuff, and I, I don't really hold that against them when i found out more of the story you know it's kind of sad and i was mad at the time whenever you know whenever things you know whenever he wasn't delivering what he promised but then whenever i got the whole story of what you know what happens you know kind of sucks and it's cool that stephen byro is kind of making, making good up for on it. it yeah making up for it so i think that he did have something in the works i think he talked to byro before he passed away oh yeah yeah you know and and had this in the works which is which is an honorable thing to do, and I have a lot of respect for that. So. Yeah, for sure. But also on the other end, like how many people tell you to make a movie, make a movie, and then they act really excited about it, and then when you go like try to do a Indiegogo or you try to get people to come help you, no one's fucking around. Yeah, yeah, it's that's a, that's a, that's the problem with independent film, and, and then there's a lot of things that I that I've encountered too with um, directors that were friends of mine 
that would have campaigns and then make all this money on these campaigns. And um, next thing you know, they're buying a new car, they're buying a new house, and then they, they deliver a piece of shit film. And that just oh, really fuck. irritates me. And uh, that's happened quite a bit. And then, uh, then then there's somebody like Marcus Cook that can't even get his uh, um, a Thousand Tears sequel made because nobody wants to donate. And there's people donating to all these unknown filmmakers. Or these fucking them. fan films that yeah. they don't even own the fucking rights to. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just, it's ridiculous. I just, I think that's crazy. You know, there's all these struggling artists out there that are well-deserving. I know people get mad when you, I, but fan films should come out of pocket 100%. Exactly. Your pocket, yeah. not somebody else's yeah. pocket. I know that yeah. sounds shitty, but they're fan films. Yeah, I agree. And and I, I don't do, I mean, I don't, nothing against the directors that do campaigns. I don't do them. If, if I don't have the budget for it, it doesn't get made. Well, you don't want to have to answer to somebody because you've been on the other end waiting for it. And like, if you yeah. don't, that's why I never took the money and money either, but I only made two little movies, but I used, you know, very little of my own money. Yeah. But I just yeah. don't want to have to answer to somebody. I don't want to rush through it. If I don't. Yeah. And, and and that's another thing too. You 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 people are expecting you to to make a a, a great film, and then I don't want to disappoint people. So I then don't they wanna... get slimy little bastards. I like slimy. I like slimy <laughs> I'm little. I was fucking with you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was. A, I liked your film. That was good. I was hoping you were gonna make another one. <laughs> I, I I thought I made Halloween Spookies, and then I was just like, I don't want to do anything anymore. It's too time consuming. Too much. It's also asking a lot of people. It is. Like as you get older, you realize like you just don't like asking people for any favors. Yeah, that's it's tough because it's almost like you're asking them for an arm and a leg. You know, well, their time is the most important when you get older. It, you're abs- you, you nailed it right on the head, man. You did, and that and that is a huge thing. And it's like that's why I said like after uh, this film I'm doing, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do another feature film. I might be able to do a short, but I it's just really hard. And you're right, unless you get a budget or, you know, if you pay, if you, I found that if you pay people, they will come. <laughs> yeah, that's the first movies I did. I didn't pay people. I paid there for gas if they drove, but yeah. I would never do that again. Like, it's like, I'm not having people come here and not getting paid anymore. Cause, cause personally, I'm probably not going to do something unless I'm getting paid either. So like, how can I expect someone else to do it? Exactly. And, and that's the thing too. It's like, if I, if, if, if I got a budget, and I could pay people, it'd be a lot better. And I, and I want to pay people for their time. It's just that, you know, I'm like you, I, I'll try to like feed them or, you know, pay for, if they come from long distance, pay for gas or. Yeah. They shouldn't be out of pocket do. at the very least. Right. Yeah. I mean, I try to, I try to, you know, do what I can and I pay for everything myself. That's and people are like, you know, when people rip apart people's independent films because they don't have a budget, that's not fair because they don't know. The budget, the budget is is one thing, but like writing isn't. But like some shit's unforgivable. Like if you hear cut, like I've heard a couple watching yeah. a couple of events. I'm like, why am I hearing cut here? Like that's two <laughs> seconds. Like I should. You didn't even rewatch your movie. Like that's, that's not acceptable. That's, that's the fault of the editor. <laughs> yeah, that's not acceptable though, right? Exactly, exactly. But I mean, like I said, it it's it is. You're right. It is hard. I am getting older, and it, it is tough. And I and I love making films, and I love. I love I love the process and I love doing through it, but it, you're right, it is it's tough. It is. I mean, we just yeah. said we can't even watch a movie without falling asleep. Like, make a fucking exactly. movie. Good luck. I'll be like, <laughs> well, I don't, are you are you even forty yet? I'm thirty five, but I look forty. Uh, no, nah, I was gonna say I didn't think you were forty yet. So wait till you hit forty. Then, I know dead. you work. I know, I know you work a lot. So I don't work that much right now, but I guarantee get forty hours. Yeah, well, I, I knew that you work. You work kind of an odd shift, don't you? Well, I get up real early because I, yeah. I work out before I go to work. Yeah, yeah. So because when I get home, I won't. Work. I won't be able to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I knew that you got up pretty early and stuff. So, yeah. So, well, it is what you, it is. You got what do you have coming up? Um, actually, I got um um my crew member bob Vraslovic, he played in the sidling hill he was the um he the played big John. soldier guy yes he actually had he directed his first feature film homicidal harry now a lot of people get confused and think that i'm the director but i am the, the main actor in it and he is editing that currently that is finished he's just cleaning it up and i know a lot of people were curious on when it's going to re- get, get released but he's just taking his time with it because it's his first feature film 
and he wants to make it good. And and I know that the Gore Hounds will be happy with it because that film is an absolute bloodbath. Nice. So that one is coming up on Hardcore Core Productions. Um, my film, um, Collins Creepy and Company, I'm slowly banging out, and I just released a trailer for that. So you can go on my, my page and check it out. Um, that I'm hoping to have that wrap by the end of uh, fall. I'm hoping to. But I have a few more things to film. But on the most part, that that's going to be coming up. And um, Michael Todd Schneider's new film, I've been helping him with that. His new Devil's Night movie, that's going to be coming out very soon. And I got to see a rough cut of it. And it is, a, it is absolutely amazing film. So... I, I recommend people check that out whenever he releases that too. So those are, those are the main things I've been working on recently, like the projects and stuff. So um, it's been, it's been pretty good and I've been uh, pretty happy and staying busy with that. So I'm hoping people will dig uh, homicidal Harry and um, Holland's creepy and company, because I definitely try to do something a little bit different with that. Um, I want to, I'm kind of curious to hear your thoughts when you watch symbolic as volume two, you'll see the um, kind of like the promo Family Home Evening is 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 a short version of Collins Creepy and Company. Uh, I actually and I think I heard you talk about it on another podcast. I, I can't remember. There's like three. Like I, I know Sick on Sick on uh, Sick on Films is a podcast that does extreme films. You weren't on that one. You were on Quality Violent Cinema or the other one. There's another one, Ultra Violet Cinema. I, is it Brandon Terry has a podcast too? Yeah, I thought it was more morbid, morbid uh, something. I ah oh, man, I feel bad. I forget the name. Oh, see, yeah. I listen to all of them at work, so like I have them in a flow. Like so, tons of podcasts coming in a row, and I never remember the names. I just know who's on there and listen to them and shit. So like, there's a couple yeah. of them. Yeah, I think you were on yeah. one of those, right? Yeah, I was, and I, uh, that was whenever I just finished with Family Home Evening, the short film, but. Like I said, Collins Creepy and Company is just it's it's different because it has some humor in it, more humor than the stuff that I'm used to doing. It's basically kind of a love letter to like trauma, John Walters, um, just like Henry, a portrait of a serial killer and the mix of married with children, I would say. And in, I based the characters off of like um, just ideas. I work I work with at a, at a forensic unit. Uh, with the criminally insane. So some of the people I've worked with over the years, I kind of based my ideas on some of the characters. And um, it's just basically about these two um, late Vietnam vets that are laid off from the steel mill in the late 80s um, that uh, are just complete shit bags. I wanted the characters to be the most scumbag characters that you can think of. They go around um, Western Pennsylvania trying to settle a, a gambling debt and they go on like a murderous drug fuel uh, free through the, the countryside and uh, rural cities to um, make this money for their gambling debt. And it's, um, it's pretty wild. I, I, like I said, I released a trailer and it's been getting some good uh, feedback and I hope people like it. So I wanted to make it as crazy and over the top and um, the, the, the best I could. Uh, and it was funny because whenever I made Family Home Evening, I was kind of like, I don't know about these characters. And then whenever I watched the short on the television after it got scored and everything, I was just like, man, I really like these characters a lot. And I yeah, never thought good. I would. Yeah. So it's something that I enjoyed and I hope other people do. I mean, I know it's not for everybody, um, especially like family members of mine don't necessarily agree with what I do. But um, I told people that these films aren't for everybody then they're not, you know, but I enjoyed making this. I had fun. This is probably about the funnest time. I've had making a film because it's just been kind of laid back. So no pressure, you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm hoping to get it done by the end of this year. Nice. I mean, your movie Sideland Hill, like really the only thing that holds it back are like budget constraints, like sound and that kind of shit. Like yeah. the story yeah, was good. Was the idea was good. The location was good. Like I remember enjoying that movie. Yeah, that, that was my first feature film and there was a lot of technical stuff about it. And um, a lot of, I learned a lot of stuff about that. It took me five years to make it. Um, that's actually being re-released um, through Mega City um, here probably next month or, or May, and it's going to be an all-new cut. Um, they're going to they're remastering it, and they're trying to work on some of those little problems that I had with the sound and stuff. So hopefully, hopefully that'll be um, people will enjoy that. Oh, and it's also cut down too because I got a lot of people. I got a lot of feedback about people not liking the runtime, and I get it because that was the first time I edited a film 
And you know how you want to, when you edit a film, you want to leave everything in, but yeah. Like every moment of every actor you think's great. And then like, yeah. it doesn't like, it doesn't register for other people like it does for you. Exactly. So it's going to be cut down to 90 minutes. So I'm excited about it and I hope people um, will enjoy this new version. There also will be my original version on, on the release too, which is cool. So I'm happy about that. And yeah, you did review it a while ago and I, I really appreciate you doing that because um, that meant a lot to me because you, like I said, you were one of my favorite reviewers and having you review two of my films was just really, really amazing. I appreciate it. So, boy, I mean, I think you, I, th I don't know. I think you gave me last days of Livermore. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. It's been, I, I can't even remember either. It's been so long. That was the first, yeah. that was my I, first I try not film. to take independent movies like that. You know what I mean? Like from, from companies sending me stuff, it's a little bit different because it comes out of, but yeah. like if an independent filmmaker, I never ask them for fucking releases anymore. It's like, if I wanted, I, I try to buy everything like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I appreciate, I appreciate you doing that. You know, you're like I said, you, we need more people like you in the uh, independent film world. You know that, that you know you, you just that's that's great that you can do that. You're very supportive of. Um, I need you know, to I need to buy stuff. more. I, I haven't been as supportive as if I used to be because you get burnt a little bit, and then you just start buying movies that your friends make, and you don't buy anything else. That's how you know. Yeah, I, I, I get you. When you have a huge library, man, your library is just huge, huge. I mean, how many? Do you even know how many movies you have? No idea. <laughs> a lot. Let's just say a lot. A lot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you 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 support a lot of these filmmakers, and that's really great. I mean, I, I hope that they appreciate what you're doing for them because not a lot of people have the time to do the stuff that you do. So, like I said, I appreciate that. You know, you, you doing that, and me being a first time director with some with those films too. It's it was nice to have somebody like you, you know, reviewing it because you're 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 re very well respected in the independent community. Like I've never heard anybody ever, I never heard anybody ever say anything bad about you. And I don't think anybody could say anything bad about you. So, you know, I, mean, I, I know there's a lot of people out there talking shit on different people, but I never heard anything bad about you. So The only I, time I, I ever dislike somebody is when they talk something bad about somebody I, I'm friends with. And I'm just yeah. like, that just leaves a shitty taste in my mouth about them. But I've never had anything personal with them. But then at the same time, I don't want to be friends with them because I you know they talk shit about somebody for no reason. That's when you start. Yeah. Like, you're like, why? Yeah, you stay out of the drama. And that's good. That's good. That's good that that you can do that. So I never see you fighting with anybody on like Facebook or groups or anything like that. You're 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 pretty, you're nope. pretty. Uh, you, you know, you stay out of the drama. But then, like like I said, whenever you see something you like, you, you always make an appearance, and that's that's cool that you can do that. Like if I post something, you're like, hey man, where did you get that? Where did you get that from? I'm like, wow, Dave doesn't know where to get this from. I was like, that's cool. No I man, you're, like I said, you you know more about that shit than me now. I, way more way more ex extreme stuff than me for sure like if i had a question about extreme shit i'd ask you or art editor or marcus cook i mean i'm sure there's some stuff i know that you guys don't know but i'm yeah, pretty yeah, sure that yeah. you're you know a lot more about that stuff than me now like i said i've fallen behind i've been watching too many big movies well i mean like i said there, there's a lot of good big movies too so i mean you you do have a lot of knowledge on stuff I, like you do know there's stuff that i don't know about that you that you know so it's good that we can feed each other this information oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And that's what it's about. And that's what I said, like with my group on Facebook, that's what it's about. It's not about drama. It's about finding films. And, and, and that and whenever I see people in groups like fighting over stupid shit, I'm like, man, this ain't this ain't about like the you know, VHS groups. Oh, yeah, those are those are just the most horrible groups. They're so mean. Actually. Like, I'm like, are you really? Yeah. Yeah, they're just like the most horrible groups. There's like tape. There's tape people are just the most. I'm not trying to say this, but they're just not like, all of them. Like, but some of them are just pricks. They're, they're, they're just assholes. You like somebody posts a tape and then like they're, people are like, oh, well, you know, where, you know, where'd you get that? That slips all messed up, or you know, is there mold on that tape? And it's just like, man, well, what's the the fuck? wrong with you people? Yeah, what's wrong with you people? I'll kill you. I Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't understand that either, man. It's 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 weird. But yeah, Dave, I'm glad that you know you're. You, you know you're a pretty humble guy and you you know you appreciate you are one of the ones that appreciate film for what it is and, and you you don't you don't let the bullshit get in between that and that's really cool and yeah, i appreciate man, that i appreciate you coming on here and doing this we're, we're about to hit a fucking two-hour episode here oh wow awesome i had a great time man like i said i'm honored to be on your show and i'm thank thank you for having me on there this is like a great honor yeah i'm happy to have you on yeah awesome well i'll see you man all right thanks again dave take care
You have some fun tonight, Creepy Bob. We have to warn you, the details of this case are very disturbing. It did not decompose within the trunk. She was killed elsewhere, and her body was placed into that trunk. And dismembered her body as police were arriving. He was uh, dismembering the body of a female. Prompting the officer to make a frantic call for backup. Haunted by what one of his officers saw inside this apartment. She then saw a fire, and the screams got louder and sounded, quote, full of pain and terror. How was your day? Well... The weapons that he used, um, one was described as a machete. That's all we did all day. And then we came home and dealt with your dumb ass. <laughs> Only in Western PA you see some shit like oh, that creepy. Oh, oh.